even spell virus without I and you, right? We need you. I'm going to do my part. She's going to do her part. We're all going to. We need the public in mass to do their part. Right now at six coronavirus cases surge across the state. Now Governor Eric Holcomb says the worst is still to come and Hoosiers need to keep practicing social distancing. Good evening, everyone. I'm Brooke Martin. And I'm Phil Sanchez. The increase in coronavirus cases across the state now impacting law enforcement. IMPD confirming today four police officers have tested positive for the coronavirus. Dozens more, Brooke, waiting for test results. News 8 Richard Essex has more. Indianapolis Metro Police are developing a contingency plan right now in case staffing levels drop too low. The first IMPD officer with the coronavirus has been off work since March 12th, the second since March 16th, and a third officer that works for a covert police unit tested positive around the same time. This afternoon, the department confirmed to News 8 that four officers tested positive for the COVID-19 virus. All four officers are quarantined at home and being monitored for any progression of the symptoms. And there are several others waiting results. We have several dozen officers who are waiting for test results right now. Um, that are quarantined? That are off on quarantine, yes. The department has taken steps to control the spread of the virus. This afternoon, IMPD's downtown district roll call was held outside on the sidewalk. All cops are given personal protection equipment and instructed to not engage people any closer than six feet unless absolutely necessary. Rick Snyder, the president of the Fraternal Order of Police, says the first four officers are just the tip of what's coming. I think the key point to make in this is that we fully expect and are planning for uh, a significant surge in numbers of our officers being positive. Snyder says that just because of the sheer number of exposure opportunities in doing their job on a day-to-day -day basis, in an effort to control the spread, the department has temporarily closed many offices and are restricting access to many others. Really, all contingencies and continuity plans have to be on the table. The one thing that we fully understand uh, in all of our prior training and preparation for things such as this is that this right now is a public health uh, crisis. And so our officers are just stepping through that. But the concern always becomes uh, trying to prevent it from transitioning into any kind of a public safety crisis. All police officers and first responders that suspect they've been exposed to the virus are being tested free of charge at two drive through locations. The department is not releasing exactly how many officers are under self-quarantine because they say the number changes almost by the hour. If staffing levels do drop too low, officers that are currently in administrative roles could be brought back out onto the street. In Indianapolis, Richard Essex, Wish TV, News 8. All right, Richard, thank you. The state of Indiana reporting a large increase in coronavirus cases today. The 336 new reported cases is the largest one-day jump by far. So that brings the statewide total to 981. The state also reporting seven additional deaths. That brings the total of deaths in our state to 24. Well, the state health commissioner saying our state may not see the peak of this coronavirus outbreak until mid to late April. And the governor reiterating this is not just a problem for certain communities. News 8's David Williams joins us live to explain. David. Governor Eric Holcomb said this is urban, this is suburban, and this is rural. He said, if you don't think this is coming, we need to talk. The governor said the number of cases are compounding in certain areas like a snowball rolling downhill. Health Commissioner Dr. Chris Bach says, yes, the numbers of people dying from COVID-19 and testing positive for the virus are going up. That is because more people are being tested. In fact, there are more than 2,000 new COVID-19 tests in the last 24 hours. Now, Dr. Box also said when you look at the breakdown of age ranges of COVID-19 cases, there's something that 70 and 80-year-olds in Indiana are doing right now that helps. But what I want to point out to you is that the 70 and 80 year olds have been listening and they've been kind of staying home and sequestered, partly because of the influenza outbreaks that we were having, partly because we were talking about COVID-19. They didn't have responsibilities and obligations to get out and take care of ill parents or, or young grandchildren. They didn't have jobs that they were going to. So they didn't have the exposure that some of our younger people did. 
Governor Holcomb also says as we get closer to the surge that we know is coming, right now the state has the inventory to handle where we are today. By the way, if you missed today's COVID-19 briefing, you can watch the whole thing right now on wishtv.com. For now, we're live in downtown Indianapolis. I'm David Williams, Wish TV News 8. All right, David, thank you. Well, several entrepreneurs are getting some much needed relief tonight. All tenants in the city market can defer rent for two months. Mayor Joe Hogsett made that announcement this afternoon. News 8's Aliyah Hodges has more. The one thing business owners miss is the morale of this place. There's usually tons of people in here dining in, and although they're not allowed to dine in, business owners still want customers to come out and show their support. Tenants say lunchtime is usually their busiest hour, but foot traffic is few and far in between at City Market. It's a change in pace for Grecian Garden Restaurant, a tenant for 18 years. They're just one of the many small businesses who can defer up to two months of rent. Tenants can pay the funds over the remainder of their lease. The mayor says City Market has experienced a significant loss in revenue since restrictions have been in place. It's harder for small business owners. Uh, they probably don't have the cash reserves that large businesses have to, you know, sustain times like this. And it's also uncertainty of how long it's going to last. You don't know if it's going to be two weeks or three months, and it's hard to plan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, for helping us out. We really, really appreciate it. I know all the vendors in here do. Uh, I've been really worried about it, and uh, you know, going, you know, you got to make this this work too, plus our personal bills. So uh, this is great, great news. Uh, we needed this. Business owners hope City Market will be brought back to life soon. Mayor Hogsett says he continues to help other business owners outside of the city market. For a list of those resources, you can head to our website, wishtv.com. Reporting in downtown, I'm Aliyah Hodges, News 8. Government leaders are pushing out new and vital information regarding the coronavirus, and thousands can tune in almost instantly to get the latest updates. Yeah, but if you can't hear or speak a different language, the information may take a little bit longer to get. News 8's multicultural reporter Katira Winfrey explains how Luna Language Services is helping spread information. 15% of the people who live in Indiana do not speak English in their homes, but they still need access to vital information coming out about COVID-19. Well, Luna Language Services is stepping up, providing a long list of translated materials, but they are also working with the governor's office, providing him with an American Sign Language interpreter. We don't see the peak yet. This is a These glimpse into what it's like to be deaf. You know vital information about COVID-19 safety guidelines are going out, but you can't hear it or can't understand it. This is a reality for thousands of Hoosiers. There are over 100 languages represented here. We have approximately 15% of our population do not use English in the home. Some don't speak at all, and getting vital information can be delayed or wrong. And at times like these, correct information matters. We don't want to continue the spread of the coronavirus, right, or um, maybe getting the virus. Jay Krieger is deaf and uses American Sign Language. He shared his message through ASL interpreter Naomi Casale. So when we are providing information and you're providing important essential announcements and you have to think to yourself, is this information dependent on being able to hear? It's a misconception, he says, that closed captioning is enough for everyone. There is a small group of those individuals and they can read the captioning just fine, but there's a lot of members of the deaf community who, again, are monolingual, which means that they are pretty dependent on ASL and they don't have the extensive skills in English. Luna provides the translators you'll often see at Governor Eric Holcomb's health updates, but Luna also has translated documents. Some also come from the CDC to provide even more COVID-19 safety tips in different languages. The mitigation efforts will not work unless the whole community is involved. Luna has compiled a list of resources and that translated material. You can find links to that at wishtv.com. Reporting on the north side of Indianapolis, I'm Wish TV News 8's multicultural reporter, Katira Winfrey, 